Welcome. Thanks for joining. And nice that you're here. I'm Malta. Um, we start the presentation and we will have time for questions anytime you want. But also at the end, uh, we, can, uh, we can go through any details. And we'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, compared to the talk before, this is more like a theoretical thought experiment about what maps actually are or what do we understand as geographic web maps. But in the second part, I will also present a kind of implementation, experimental implementation on how we can publish these kinds of new um, web maps. So first, I want to shortly start about uh, the perspective. Does anyone know what semantic annotations basically are? Cool. Would you tell it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, and the, for example, the, um, yeah, so uh, the, the answer was um, it's basically metadata on an object and to store various attributes, right? What you said. Exactly. And people use it on the web, for example, through URIs, Uniform Resource Identifiers. So, um, and these URIs refer to well-defined terms and concepts uh, describing the world from a specific domain. And we use it to um, contextualize data and give it kind of meaning so machines can interpret it better and decode the, the, the data successfully. So my perspective is more about map makers. There's actually a working group. It's called, it was uh, the Open Annotation Group, which joined now is the W3C um, Web Annotation Group. This is a kind of annotation from a reader's perspective. If you're confronted with a web map, but the reader, you want to annotate it, this is kind of a federate, uh, federated architecture for annotations. Uh, my focus is on people who create maps using these tools to, to create these annotations in advance for their readers. So just to make clear that the perspectives here about um, a different creation of, of, of web mapping documents. So um, yes. My, my assumption is that basically when we have com complex visualizations such as geographic web maps, um, with an, if they would be annotated, we, we would be um, supported in, in more effectively reading what the visualization is about and maybe what is also hidden through the visualization but actually contained in the information which informed the visualization. So I think there's kind of... Um, the potential yet not yet tapped for, for semantic technologies, also to, to facilitate uh, human communication um, on, based on these artifacts like maps. So turning any information into a statement, like if somebody says that this, there's a house, we have this kind of, uh, it gets a bit complicated. Um, because someone said there is a house, or there is something which we could call structure. And we have kind of uh, the who and the where, the coordinates, the, the something. Maybe there's an individual entity representing this house. For example, this university is kind of a defined concept, the University of Liverpool, Brussels. And it maybe exists in many databases, for example, Wikidata or DBpedia. And if you, if you manage to map to create maps which already reference this item, then you can interlink, uh, use maps to interlink many data sources. And then we would have also the label in English language, we would, could, be, could be a, a structure of, um, for the society, or the civic structure, like, uh, um, I don't know how to translate it better. Um, basically, uh, uh, we can look in the definition, it's a more, more abstract term for a house. Um, and furthermore, to, to, um, attached to this house there are many other attributes uh, which annotate um, kind of on these levels. For example, sources often a, an organization or a person, um, like there are many vocabularies to d describe this. So. Um, yeah, if we, if we talk about semantic annotations on maps, we, um, I decided to use the schema.org vocabulary because it's kind of a vocabulary which 
allows us or tries to describe everyday concept, uh, everyday life concepts, like um, terms which which we use in everyday life, and um, there are five. Up very abstract entities, for example, organization is basically anything which is kind of uh, from university to business to a all kinds of companies and it's a very um, it's a hierarchical taxonomy about how to describe the world. Creative work, there are book articles, media files, um, intangible is uh, yeah, something which uh, has no material existence. Event is also, you know, uh, uh, like an event and a place. We can we can look at it, look it up. I wanted to click here and see some examples. If you have never be see, be seen schema.org, it is a public vocabulary developed by a ma um, consortium of major search engine developers, and they use it to describe data on the web. So the Google Knowledge Graph is also understands this vocabulary, right? Um, we will see here. Um, this is, oops, excuse me. Um, so we, here we have um, the hierarchy, for example, of places. A civic structure, maybe an airport, aquarium, beach, bus station, campground, cemetery, event, etc., etc. Um, and we can say. Um, for example, uh, event venue has the geolocation, and or let's make another example. For example, these are the, the relations which um, describe how the building relates to the geographical reference values. So we say, if uh, if I use an organization and I have geo data on it. The area surf property is, is there to express um, that the geographic representation, for example, the geometry, represents the area served by this organization. Um, or a birthplace is an attribute of a person. For example, you, you want to say this geographical reference value is the birthplace of a person. And um, drop-off location is actually a bus stop, for example. So you can do a coordinate and put it in, in relation to a uh, kind of a civic structure like a bus stop and say this coordinate stands to the content in relation as of drop-off location. And there are some generics like geo where, which don't specify a specific relation between the content and the, and the geographical representation. And yeah, this is all also in the repo and this is just to, to tell you about what kind of annotations or statements I want map makers to make about the world. So if you make a map, you're implicitly making these statements. But if you use this vocabulary to make these statements, you have a well-defined um, meaning, and you can publish this uh, information machine interchangeable and application interchangeable. So you can reuse this information not only in the visualization, but also in other things. I will show some examples. Yeah, please. How does this represent hierarchies? I mean, the ULB may have uh, campus here has mm -hmm. many buildings, mm -hmm. many, th th these buildings are different institutes, mm -hmm. and maybe the ULB has also another ca uh, uh, campus uh, mm -hmm. far away from here. Mm -hmm. No, ah, okay, it's not a spatial hierarchy, but topical hierarchy. So the schema, I mean, there's kind of a class name um, that the um, institute is, what well, the relation between the institute and the university is probably, the institution is a part of the university, but the in institute is also independent of the university. So it has its own building, maybe. A, a own building. In, a, in a building way, it's probably easy because we can always refer to like the spatial structure between that they are one big thing. It's, it's, if we have the area of the, of the university, we can also say, and this includes all other spots, we can still um, interpolate and say, OK, this institute is part of the building. So in spatial reasoning, it's more simple to aggregate this, but in topical reasoning, we actually would have to need to express the relation between the institute and the university. And this is kind of a complex relation sometimes. It's not easy to describe uh, because they're also acting on their own. It's not that the university is the umbrella for everything. So uh, this is, I just meant the schema.org is hierarchical that it make, allows to very abstract uh, classifications, but it also allows very concrete classifications, and it, it is a kind of hierarchy in there. Okay, there's a long excourse for the first two slides. <laughs> I have to.
pick up and get to some examples. Sorry for if it was a bit theoretical. Um, let's get started with uh, the next chapter. So, yeah, we, we talked about this kind of statements we want to make and this is kind of an example for map, web map, uh, how it's maybe technically seen for technicals. We have a model of the world, you did, right? And we have kind of a projection layer, which we now do to, to base maps or base layer, so-called, which we use. And I'm just concerned with annotations of all the overlays. So it, it, it's an interesting future work on how, for example, this, this schema ontology or vocabulary relates to OSM tags, for example, because this is on the base layer. And this could be matched or aligned to, to each other. But I basically just um, wanted to allow the map makers to express, um, describe the content and the overlays. And this is also the focus of the implementation in Leaflet. So I needed to find a term for, for the web mapping document. It's a central concept for me because I also wanted to see the geographic web map um, as if it weren't a visualization, but if it were a list and I could sort it, I could uh, explore it, kind of attrib different attributes. And I work at the Department of C for Cartography, and s some people really don't uh, understand my computer scientist approach, that I want to get rid of the visualization and just read text in a kind of way, because it's a less ambiguous way to, to describe the world for me. And... Um, yeah, so a web mapping document is basically trying to decompose an, a map into a list of elements. Um, it needs to be standard conform and machine readable. Uh, the idea is to, to, to reduce the complexity and just engage with certain parts of the map so I can analyze it. And it may be used to snapshot a map. This is also coming from a research project where we study participatory maps, which change often over time and have a lot of different authors in it. I will show an example in a minute. And this is how to um, like archive even, or there's no possibility for programmatic reasoning, reasoning about this kind of collections. And yeah, if, if we de develop such a model of a web mapping document, um, this would allow us to develop interactions for maps, which are reusable across all kinds of maps. It's kind of an application developer approach before I can write uh, user interfaces for it, I need to model the map. And that's kind of the idea behind the web mapping document. This is kind of a web map, uh, which is um, a good example because it's just visualization. And behind this is a real database. And you can also engage with the data in a different perspective. But um, this map has a lot of different content types from ideas. To, to problem descriptions, and uh, each kind of bubble is also um, a different author behind it. So there's kind of a very complex information, um, amount of information is very complex aggregated in this visualization. And, and the website also provides a means to engage about the ideas people have about the city. Um, it uh, opens, um, yeah, they try to engage citizens of, of the city of Hamburg to engage in uh, ideas and exchange ideas about how to improve the city. Um, and they also have alternative visualizations for the same data. So it's not just only the map, but um, there are lots of mapping applications built nowadays, like Carto or Mapbox, where they just collect information in maps, but it is not accessible anywhere else or anywhere else. So I hope to also to approach these. Um, companies with this free, free software from Leaflet to, to enable their users to publish maps, also machine readable and uh, exposed for other um, application developers. Um, so I had to uh, study a bit HTML and how to uh, express content of multiple authors in one document. Um, I am I investigated some terms, and these are basically all the old uh, approach, and these are all the tags which, are, which actually allow for structuring the content from depending on that there are many authors. I decided to go for a mix of article and address. So um, because of the content in the article, 
now describing a web map element, sorry, a element um, should be independently and reusable of the map in it, it is, in it is, it is used in. One example of such a content, this is a map of a festival I made, and this is all, uh, like all, um, <coughs> this represents an artist and a band with a concrete track. And if the publisher of this map, which is occasionally me, also knew about semantic annotations for map maps, I could like open this map in my VLC or use it somewhere else, or save it as a playlist and do something else with it. So it's an example where the, whereas people spend much time organizing information in maps, but then it's kind of lost in it. And I see it kind of a, as a practice, uh, like a, a, a information organization practice that people start to, use, to do. It's somehow happened that we start to organize also information on maps. So my approach is, or my hope is to contribute to a document format which makes it a more, re more, more reusable. So what is a web map element? As I said, if we want to have a list of web map elements, if we want to see the map as a list of elements, we have to define what is an element. And this is kind of my definition, is similar to a point of interest, but can also include areas. It's not specific about locations. And it's basically everything you, you overlay a map. Um, and specifically about my understanding is that a web map element is both together uh, the geographic representation, like the geodata used in it, for example, an, a polygon or a point location, plus the content. Just the content description, which actually um, is, is represented by this geographic information, uh, together make a web map element. And both are kind of, as I said, statements about the outer world from, from individuals. And if, if we, if we, tend, if we um, start to see web map elements as distinct items, we can um, connect these information or elements to the spatial index of the web, which is not yet possible if we, if we annotate them. Um, we can also show selected information on a, on a specific web map element on demand to users. And we also maybe, which is not yet like, I have no evidence for, but there, theoretically these kind of uh, maps should be indexed by major search engines. And we, we could actually find maps through a topical description of one element. Like we, we can see what kind of geodata someone used to represent this content in which map, right? So it makes a different, it makes them open up for, for public research. Um, yeah, so that's, I will shortly present the vocabulary I used. So this is basically the schema.org vocabulary to describe a web map element. And this is a relation I explained at, in, in the beginning. So like in which relation does this content stand to the geographic data? And this is basically, the denotation for the geographic data. And this is um, all schema vocabulary, and this is all Dublin Core vocabulary. Dublin Core is kind of an old established metadata standard to annotate any kind of information resource. So it just contains very basic terms to describe data sets or data entries. And, oh, I should have exchanged. <laughs> Sorry for the. Um, yeah, so this is kind of overall is the the 20 terms or so which I propose to annotate a web map element with um, in text form again. And yeah, so um, I also wanted to make an implementation and I think this is the next slide. Um, so I will now go in, into the practical details. Uh, five minutes, yeah, I have five minutes left before we can open up for questions. So. This is a standard leaflet example of a marker, and it's basically an image tag with a resource. So there is really not no meaning in the document about, there's no spatial references exposed, there's no topical classification, even if there is a title. The title is, um, I think, it's not even in here because it's another layer. So it's hard to, uh, to, make, to guess something, and which is totally fine because Leaflet was not made for this, and HTML also was not made for this. I don't want to be, to be misunderstood. This is, uh, I just chose Leaflet to implement because it's very easy to extend, and a lot of people use it. And so there's a potential that 
Uh, a lot of people can just change the HTML output if they install my plugin. And this is a map where we see uh, one thing. So my plugin co contains two components. It's not really well illustrated. But the one component is to generate the new kind of HTML model. And the other component is kind of a first example of a lethal control, which engages and operates on this model. And here, for example, we have a full text search through the HTML. And when I select an item, I can control the viewport of the, of the HTML. This is kind of possible. We, we can build this kind of controls with the new model of the map and actually have kind of an ecosystem of map interaction dialogues, which work on every map which, which implements this model. Um, so there is an example of my map in the structured data tool for, for um, well, I'll give a quick demo before I, I, I jump into there. Let's, let's see how it works. So this is basically uh, 400 public sculptures. No, photographs of public sculptures. It's not the sculptures themselves represented in the map here, but the photographs. Uh, from the Wikidata database. And as you see, you cannot really read anything here. There's no really information because it's hard. The labels would overlap on stuff like this. But now I can use the leaflet control and say, can I find the uh, tomb of Oscar Wilde? Uh, it's in the Cher La Paix, in the, in the famous cemetery in Paris center. And I can, so this interaction, this click here actually gets the spatial data from the HTML, has no relation to the leaflet runtime. So it really extracts the, the references from the DOM. And this is kind of the dialogue for the metadata. And I also see this, this data set comes from uh, this element, this web map element is actually a Wikimedia file. Uh, which is associated uh, from Wikidata. So this is kind of a map where I g went this far that each element has a URI for the entry in the Wikidata database. So it's an inter a map with a, which just interlinks other databases. So this um, is one example of where I see, oh, well, now I can read, these are 412 photographs in this map. Other, before that, I couldn't find out what is this map about. But now I see the description of the map itself tells me um, this is a map about photographs. And another example is here, for example, um, in this map, I see um, two, two creative works, one city, one person, one organization, and two countries, which is actually not true. But, um, it doesn't make sense. It does, it's no problem when you have multi-polygon. It tends to be counted as many countries. But since they all have one identifier, we can interpolate and say, this is just a bug in, in the software in a, in a way. I say, um, for example, the creative work is, a, is, a, is an overlay. So we can actually also load images onto a, of other uh, base layers and start to annotate them. And this is now expressed as a bounding box in HTML. And I can. Uh, now, uh, this is a historical map of the same area, right? I will check out the HTML here. So, yeah, here we see, I, I make it a bit bigger. Um, one moment. So this is represented by an article. It's an article of type creative work. Uh, and the, the, the location it depicts, so this is a special relation. The content location means is a relation to express that this article depicts this area, which is of type geographic shape. And now there comes the bloat, I think, with a, ah, oh yeah, no, this is just a bounding box. It's not so much. I mean, if I, the, the <laughs> The polygon of uh, USA is probably 80 pages long, so <laughs> it really is a lot of data. And um, yeah, but this way we can actually find um, add these elements to the spatial index of the World Wide Web. And just a short example of how how leaflet uh, annotate works. Um, 
as I'm running off at the, out of time, a few examples. Maybe. Um, No, uh, time's up. So now we have time for five, five, uh, five minutes for questions. Yeah. Two oh. questions, okay. Okay. Just go. Uh, anyone has any special questions about uh, the Leaflet API? It's leaflet.annotate, the plugin. It's on GitHub. And you can now uh, start to annotate markers, overlays, circle markers, and pop-ups with using schema.org. Sorry for, yeah, please. The what kind of schema? Yeah. No, it's a it's a it's another taxonomy, another vocabulary, and this could be uh, the schema.org vocabulary has a specific purpose, and the OSM vocabulary has a specific purpose, and we could research into a mapping. It's just one time we need to align certain things, and it would be interchangeable. So the question was, if if I'm reinventing OSM tags. But I see it, uh, it's a, it's a free, free, uh, free form taxonomy. So, and schema.org is a controlled vocabulary. So we could actually um, benefit if we um, align these two vocabularies, and this needs to be done just once, or yeah, whenever one, one or the other changes. But it's, it's nothing I understand as a, um, I'm not trying to reinvent this. I'm just using the schema.org because the search engines understand it, right? Yeah. Mm. One more question. Okay. Maybe the next presenter can already. Yep. Thanks for your attention. Sorry.